Um, today we're going to do a calibration with a 6000 series tank using an X20 monitor. Uh, the first type of calibration we're going to do is uh, your typical wheat calibration and then we're going to do a second calibration with canola. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to explain what tank is going to be used for which product and also which rate we're targeting. Our tank number one is going to be for our wheat. Our target rate is going to be 90 pounds per acre. Tank three is going to be 1251 with a target range of 40 pounds. Tank number four is going to be 4600 with a target range of 150 pounds per acre. The first thing we should do when we're doing our calibration is uh, check our metering augers to make sure which type of metering augers we have in which tank and then also our range selection to make sure we're in the proper range for that rate. Okay, we're going to go into the monitor and change the settings now for the calibration we're going to perform. So tank one, we have to change the product for tank one. So to change the product, you touch the tank, brings up your fill window on the right hand side of the monitor. To change that product, there's the product tab here, touch the calculator on the product tab, brings up a second window. We know that it, we're, we verified it had a single flight auger, so it's a single flight auger here. So we know we have the right auger selected already. Hit the arrow to drop down your products window and we go down till we find our hard red wheat. Touch the hard red wheat and then it selects it. You press enter. It gives you a review window from the past calculations the monitor has stored. So we'll review our information quickly. We're happy with it. We press accept. And now we can choose to fill the tank now or not. We're just going to do our calibration, we're not filling now, so we'll just select no. We can set our rates right in the monitor that we're shooting for. Our preset rate 1 is going to be the 90 pounds that we're go going to calibrate for. So we hit the cal calculator on the side of preset 1 and we hit 90 and then we enter that. It also gives you the option of having a second preset. So if we want to have a preset, say we want an area where we want a little bit more product, so we'll put 100 for your second preset and then enter. You can also set increments where you can adjust your level for your metering up and down. So you hit the calculator on the increment window and when we change this we want it to go up 10 pounds. So we enter 10, we hit enter. This tank is now set up to calibrate for 90 pounds of wheat. So we'll go to tank 3 which is going to be our 1251. We're going to change that. So touch the, the window here. Changes it to fill 3 so it's tank 3 on the side. Change that product. Hit the calculator beside the product window again. Hit the drop down arrow and we'll find 1251. And also, we have double flight auger, so we, then, we verified this earlier, we know we got the right auger for this tank. So we'll hit enter. Our review window for our past calculations comes up. Looks good, we accept it. We'll check tank, or we'll do our preset rates for our 1251. Preset rate one, we're gonna try and hit 40 pounds for our boss. So we'll put 40. Enter. Preset rate, we're going to put 45 for preset 2 because we wanted, we've decided we want to have a little bit more here. And for our increments, we'll set that to 5. Okay, we're now set up for our third tank. We'll do our tank 4 with our 4600. Go to the product line, hit your calculator. High output auger we verified already. It's going to bring the products for your high output auger. Select from list with your drop down arrow and find our 4600. 
We'll enter it. We review our information. Looks good. Accept it. And it's saying that since we changed our products, the tank 4 content exceeds capacity adjust to full. We're going to hit no. Because we knew that we had that, we know that we have it full of 4600. So now we can fill the tank. Our preset rate 1 for our 4600, hit the calculator beside, it's going to be 150. Hit enter. Preset rate 2, we're going to drop that back to 120. Hit enter. And our increments, we'll go with increments of 15. Okay. Now we have to make sure that when we're doing our calibration that we're getting our calibrated rate. This little window here where we have 100, we want that to be 90. So we touch 90. Now this is going to be our calibrated rate, what we're going for. Same thing with tank 3. You want to make sure that that says 40 on that line or else we're not going to be calibrating for 40. And same thing for tank 4, we want 150. This bar here is what you're going to be calibrating for. So if that's the rate you want, you have to ensure that that's on that line. Next, we'll set the speed for our monitor. Okay, the next step in our calibration is to charge the metering augers. The reason for charging the metering augers is to make sure that the product has made it to the end of the metering auger so that it's not measuring meter rolls as it's uh, got no product coming out. And for the metering augers, there is no rate chart book with the X20 monitor. Your rate chart book is in the, op in the monitor itself. And the range that you want to be running these in is anywhere between 5 and 95 on the actuator here. So when we charge our metering orders, we're going to wait until the actuator centers on a position where it feels comfortable getting the rates that we're looking for. If it's in the red zone, we're going to have to change the range. So we'll, uh, we'll get started here by starting the uh, calibration motor to charge our augers. And we'll put our monitor in calibration mode. As you'll notice, tank 3 has maxed out at 99. That means we're in too low of a range to hit that target with a double flight auger. So we're going to have to change our, our range position to medium. Okay, now we've got our range changed to intermediate for tank 3. We're going to try running the calibration again with just the third tank since we have the other two metering augers charged already so that the actuator can find its home for doing the calibration. Now we have all three of our metering augers charged. Tank 3 is now operating in the appropriate range. As you can see, it is now between 5 and 90, resting at about uh, 43. So now we're ready to start our calibration. We'll empty out our calibration boxes, and then we'll complete our calibration process.
Now that we have our metering augers charged, our actuator positions have found their home, we'll start our calibration. First thing we want to do is make sure that we've reset the monitor after doing our meter or our auger charge and finding the home for the actuators. So we're going to want to press the reset button on the monitor to reset the revolutions. Press the reset button. It zeroes everything back out so we can start again. Okay, we want to make sure that all our tank clutches are on for the tanks we're going to calibrate. So one, three, and four are all on now because those are the tanks we're calibrating. They're all on in the monitor. Actuators have found their home. We'll start calibrating. So we'll turn our lever for our calibration motor. You'll notice that bucket four for our uh, 4600 has become full. So what we want to do, make sure you stop the calibration by stopping the calibration motor. Then we turn tank four off at the clutch box. Then we can resume our calibration of tanks one and three. So we'll turn our calibration motor on again. Now tank one is full. So we turn our calibration motor off again and turn tank one clutch off. Now we just want to finish with calibration of tank three. We now have enough product in tank three calibration box that we stop the calibration. You want to try and get your calibration boxes as full as possible because the larger the sample, the smaller the variable for error. Okay, so now we've got our products calibrated. Now we weigh our buckets. So we take our scale that we had previously zeroed out for the weight of the calibration boxes. We'll do our wheat first. So once your buckets stop bouncing around and your scale steadies out, you take a reading off of your scale. We have 42 and a half pounds. Also, your scale is both pounds and kilograms. Make sure you're reading the pound side if you're entering pounds into your monitor. So we got 42 and a half. So we'll write that down. We'll do our 1251 next. And with our 1251, we have 30 and a half pounds. So we'll write 30 and a half down.
And now we'll do our 4600. And with our 4600, we have 42 and a half pounds. Now we're going to enter our weights into our monitor. <coughs> As you can see on the monitor, we've counted shaft revolutions for each tank, the current calibration factor that was saved into the monitor, the expected weight from our calibration, the actual weight of the product is where we're going to enter the weights we've weighed, and what the actuator position was when it finished. So we'll enter our weight for our wheat, which was 42 and a half pounds. Brings up another screen, tells us which tank, the product, the old calibration factor, which was 0.236 pounds per revolution. The new calibration factor is 0.238 pounds per revolution. The percentage of difference is 0.6, so we're within the percentage. And the sample weight, which was 42 and a half. So we like what we've done for our calibration. We can accept it. If we accept and save to file, it rewrites the file in the memory, or you can reject it. We're pretty happy with this. We're going to accept it and save it to file. Okay, so we've got that tank one done. So now we'll do our 125100. We'll enter our weight. Our weight was 30 and a half pounds. So we got 30. 0.5, and we enter it. Tank is 3, product is 125100. Our old calibration factor was 0.214 pounds per revolution. The new calibration factor is 0.164 pounds per revolution. It gives us a 23.5.4 percentage difference, and our sample weight of 30.5. 23.4 is uh, not quite acceptable. Anything under 20 is considered acceptable, so I think we'll rerun the tank 3 calibration. So we're going to reject this one and we're going to start over. We'll do number 4 before we are done here. So we'll enter the weight for number 4. It's 42 and a half. So we've got tank four, products 4600, old calibration factor of 30, 0.347 pounds per revolution, new calibration factor 0.33 pounds per revolution, percentage of difference is 0.39%, and our sample weight of 42.5. That's close, we're happy with it, we're going to accept and save. Okay, so now we want to turn off tank one, and tank four in our calibration, and we're going to recalibrate tank three. So we're going to reset, and then we're going to get everything ready to calibrate tank three again. Okay, we're going to recalibrate tank three. Since we weren't happy with the calibration we got, we were 23.4% out. We want to be a little bit tighter than that. So we've got everything set up again. We've got an empty bucket under number three, the metering auger is still charged, and the actuator has its home. So we're going to start the calibration again with just tank three turned on. So we'll start tank three.
Okay, we've got a decent sized sample from tank three, so we're going to reweigh it and enter it in the monitor. Okay, so we got 39 pounds. So it's recounted our shaft revolutions, our old calibration factor, the expected weight, the actuator position, which was 39. Now we're going to enter our actual weight, which was 39 on this calibration bucket. Okay. For tank three, the product is 1250.100, the old calibration factor of 0.214, new calibration factor of 0.202, percentage difference is 5.7%, and our sample weight of 39. Being 6% out is pretty close. The actuators will adjust to make that up, so we'll accept and save. Sometimes when you're doing a calibration, uh, there's things that happen, maybe the, there's something wedged in the auger, maybe I made a mistake. So if you're, out, if you're quite a ways out on your first calibration, it's always a good idea to add a second calibration to make sure that you get that number correct. Do it until you're comfortable with it. If you want it closer than 6%, keep doing it until you get it right. Take your time, make sure you do it right, you'll be happier with the job you've done.